The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. The theme for this celebration is the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. I will read Psalm 137 and Psalm 126. These are two distinct psalms, but sung by the same group of people, very related psalm. Then I will try to throw some light on these two psalms, and then try to deduce some lesson for us. I will begin with Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the populace we hung a house. For there our captors asked for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy, remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doom to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. It is not a good ending, but they have a reason for saying this. This is a prayer of implication. They are telling God that do it to them just as they did to us. That is the end in verse 8 and 9. But this psalm by the rivers of Babylon was sung by the Israelites when they had returned from Ezra back to Zion. They sang this song when they sat down to remember the bitter experience they had in Babylon. As worshippers of Yahweh, the true God, they would obviously gather on the Sabbath day by the rivers of Babylon. The average Jew who owe an instrument of praise. So they had the harps, the tambourines, and whatever, because they love to sing. But on a foreign land, their captors have so tormented them that their desire to sing had left them. So when they went to the riverside on Sabbath days, they hung their halves. They would not sing. And then their tormentors would come to them to ridicule them. It's as if they are rubbing some salt into their wounds. Sing out some of the songs of Zion. And then they would tell them, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land, in the land of adulterers? There is nothing to praise God about. We are hungry. We are being beaten. We are being tormented. How can we sing the Lord's song? Especially to you, our tormentors in a strange land. But now they are back home. And they are praying, oh God, remember Edom. When Nebuchadnezzar came for us, Edom shouted praises because they deemed themselves to be our enemies. They were happy that our 
Babylonians have taken us captive. And they were shouting, raise Israel down to its very foundation. God, now we are back. Repay them. That was a prayer. I'm not encouraging you to do that. But they are praying it for a purpose. Then secondly, say to the Babylonians, Father, repay them. Then they say, happy and blessed are those who dash your babies against the rock as you did to us. They are trying to paint to us what happened to them in Babylon for which they want God to repay them. Now, in Babylon, the Babylonians would take their babies from them and dash their babies against rocks. They saw them as nothing but slaves. They really tormented them. For 70 years, they were under the Babylonian rule. And there was no light at the end of the tunnel. They never thought that they were ever going to be free. But one day, one day, when Babylon had been taken over by Assyria, the king of Assyria made a profound announcement, calling all the captives to go back to, to their homes. And the Bible says this, Psalm 126, from verse 1. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Remember our fortunes like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. This is Psalm 126. What does it mean in what we are saying? Because they never thought they were ever going to be released. When Cyrus made that announcement, the Bible said they were like those who dream. They were in a trance. They had nothing, but they had to go back home to Zion, their desire, Jerusalem. As they gathered their pitiful clothings and preparing to go back home, they were like people in a trance. They never expected that it was going to be so. Let me encourage somebody sitting here that one day it will be over. Our struggles will be over. One day, the announcement will be made and your fortunes will turn around. When I was in South Africa as a missionary, I was going to preach somewhere, but I still had to pass by the grocery shop to fetch some food for the house. When we got to the shop, the queue was too long. And then when I started counting the people, I realized that by the time it got to my turn for me to be saved, I would have been too late. Now I was there not knowing what to do. Then suddenly, they opened another till. And then this supervisor came, and then he cut the queue right in front of me. He said, that man, come and stand here. Yeah. I was way back, but the man has brought me forward. That is what is going to happen to somebody. The Israelites never thought that they were going to be released. Never. Because Nebuchadnezzar was such a wicked king. And in his hands, they saw no hope. But one day, their fortunes turned around. Their fortunes turned around. As they gathered their few pitiful belongings together, they were like people walking around in trance. It was a tremendous testimony to the non-Jews. They acknowledged that the God of the Hebrews had intervened for them miraculously. And the grateful exiles joyfully agreed that the Lord has done great things for us. 
We are glad. Hallelujah. But listen, they were going to go back to the land, a pathetic remnant with little more than the clothes they wore. They are saying that the Lord has caused us to go back. We are glad. But going back was also another issue. They had nothing because they have been slaves. So what are they going to go back to do? There are so many of our Ghanaian folks who are still in the diaspora. Not because they do not like Ghana. They want to come back home. But what are they coming to do? What are they coming to eat? So these people were going back home. But they had a burden. So they prayed unto the almighty God. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as a stream in the south. What they are trying to say is this. There is a negative. There is a desert down south. But the desert normally is dry and arid and barren. But during rainy seasons, its trenches are filled again. And it produces crops. So they prayed, God, we are going to go back home. We don't know what we are going to eat, but God. Just as you do for the south, the negative, do it for us. We are going back home. And they went back home. But when they got home, the situation was a bit confusing. Now listen. Here they are. They have come back home. They, they don't even have land to farm. They have to borrow pieces of land to farm. And the grains they have to sow is not enough for them to feed on and to sow against next year. So they also pray that God help us. But they were torn between sowing the seed and eating the maize. Now if they ate it, they were not going to sow. If they did sow, they were going to be hungry. So what are they going to do? They will put their aprons on their necks. The seas are in front of them. And as they scatter the sea and they bow their heads, tears will be falling on their aprons. Now, because they are sowing what they have to eat, as they do so, they remember their children at home who are also hungry. They don't know whether to sow against next year or to eat and then call it a day. But they decided that they are going to sow. So as they took the grains and bowed their head to take more grains, tears fell on their aprons. But they said, those who sow in tears, they will bow means reap in joy. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we will gather some strength as Ghanaians. Sometimes we are too impatient with ourselves. We don't even want to grow old. Sometimes we have been disturbing ourselves and sometimes our politicians to disturb us. We cannot have Ghana becoming America tomorrow. We need some kind of patience. We need to put what it's supposed to be put down on the ground. Then wait patiently for the yield. This is what we lack as Ghanaians. This is what we lack. We are so impatient. Ghana will grow. But it will take righteous people who will do a sacrifice, decide not to eat the grains. We don't want politicians who will eat all the grains and leave us starving. Our politicians should have all the, the sympathy to sow against the future. Today, pastors are not patient. Our directors are not patient. People don't want to suffer to gain. Somebody is employed today, and the next day he wants to be riding in Land Cruiser. Our fathers never taught us that. If you don't learn to crawl, you cannot walk. But I came this morning to tell us, let us have all the patience and the faithfulness to grow as a land. Do the little that you can do in all humility. And give Ghana some space to grow. And then we will grow and we shall be there. Little by little we will be there. May I advise our directors, our politicians, our ministers. Don't eat the grains today. 
it is for the future. Sow them. It is not for you. Ghana is not too old. We are still in the sowing business. So if our politicians and our pastors will begin to ride in the best of cars, now begin to have all the planes, they want to do whatever they want to do, with the little resources that Ghana have, we shall be struggling. We will be disturbing ourselves and the nation. Let us learn to crawl. Let us learn to walk. Then we can fly. I pray that God will help us. That all of us will have the patience that, they, that the Israelites had. They say that they are sowing in tears. And they are going to reap in joy. If we are sowing, let us sow in tears. With the hope that we will reap in joy. But we want to eat the very seed that we have to sow. Then we should forget about tomorrow. We'll be frustrating ourselves and our children and our children's children. Because now we have to sow. Let our politicians sow. Let the businesses sow. Let us have the patience for it to grow. So that we shall have a better Ghana. The better Ghana is still waiting for us. But if we decide to eat the very seed for which we have to sow. Then where will be Ghana tomorrow? We shall be effectively destroying our future as a nation. They that sow in tears will reap in joy. If someone that is not prepared to sow in tears as a minister of religion and he has come in, today he wants to start with a tent. By next year he has put up a building. By next year he has broken it. He himself has a mansion, three cars, and he says that I am prosperous. God has given me. I want to challenge you to that. That is not who God is. God wants us to sow. God wants the seed to grow. God wants it to nurture. So that when the harvest time is handed over to you, you will know that you have gone through some meal. And then you will be able to handle it. They that sow in tears, they will reap in joy. But if you want to sow and harvest it whilst you are still sowing, what you will be effectively doing is digging the same grain and eating it. There will be no future for us. I pray that God will help us. Life is not all about money. Sitting in a cruising car does not define you. What we want is a Ghana that all of us will be proud of. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I pray that God will help us. That as ministers of religion, today we define the bigness of a minister in the car that he sits in. So that people will say that God has blessed me. Let me tell you, even Jesus Christ himself walked on the shores and he ate with fishermen, even though he was God. Very simple life, but he was rich. The creator of the heavens and earth, he actually put the gold on the ground. But he was not interested in digging them so that people will know that look at him, Jesus Christ the Lord. That did not define him. He looked at the future. He thought of saving mankind and bringing many unto himself. Finding bread for many people. Not finding bread for a few mouths. May the Lord help us. They that sow in tears will reap in joy. Our political terrain has been so tormenting. Because we want to have Ghana, we sow the seed today and tomorrow we want to reap. It is never so. The people we are learning from, they sow, they had all the patience and then they reap. May I encourage our politicians who are here. Stop disturbing each other. Stop disturbing yourself. And stop disturbing Ghana too. Give Ghana space to grow. Give Ghana space to crawl. Give Ghana space to learn how to walk. And then give Ghana space to learn how to fly. Let us have all the patience. And then what you have today, if you take it for yourself because you are a minister of religion, as some of us have been doing, we want to write in the best of cars because when you are a minister, the Bible says God has blessed you. And so we use this once against the future, not thinking of our congregants who do not even have food on their table. And we take it all in the name of God as bless us. We shall be living a poor Ghana in future. If our ministers of states will take all and will not think about the future, we shall be living a poor Ghana. I am praying that God will help us. Let us all have the patience 
to learn to sow. And in due course, we shall reap. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seeds for sowing. This is what we have lost as a nation. A people who go sowing, but they themselves, they are hungry. Yet they are sowing. That is why they are sowing and weeping. They are weeping because they are hungry. They are thinking about their children who are at home. If they did so, what it meant was that when they went back home, there is never going to be food on the table. Yet, they were sowing in hope, believing that the future will be better than the now. We have not grown as a country. No. We can't compare the number of years we have spent to some of these big nations. Let us have all the patience to sow our ministers of the gospel. Let us not take the big titles and think that we have arrived. Let us sow into people's righteousness so that we can have a better Ghana tomorrow. I came to tell someone that they that sow in tears, the one who is sowing must sow in sacrifice. Then his children can reap in joy. If you enter into politics or you want to be a minister of state, enter with this mentality. I am going to sow in tears against a better Ghana. Nananum, just mount on the throne as the king, as the queen. Not because you want everybody to kotor you or to bow to you, to fear you and to respect you. But you have mounted the throne to sow against your people's future. The seed is not for us to eat. The seed is for us to sow. If you eat the seed, we shall have no future. I came to tell you that they that sow in tears, they can reap in joy. I am happy that I have in my congregation today some representatives from the political sphere, some representatives from the chieftaincy, some from the clergy, and others in the nation. Now listen, let us have patience for Ghana. I pray that God will help us. They that sow in tears, they will reap in joy. But anyone who does not want to sow in tears will be denied the future of the joy that we are all anticipating. May the Lord help me. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me as a minister of the gospel that I will not come preaching because of what I will eat. I have to preach because of the dying souls. Today when you look at the standards of ministers of the gospel, they are even gorgeous than the average man. But we are supposed to be the servants of the people. Yet we want people to serve us. We have turned the tables upside down. And that is why God is not blessing the land. Because we are supposed to be the custodians of the blessings, but we have missed the mark. Our chiefs have to serve the subordinates. Our chiefs are not supposed to sit down for the subordinates to serve them. Let our chiefs roll up their sleeves. Let our politicians roll up their sleeves. Let the ministers of the gospel roll up their sleeves and take upon them the form of a servant. The Bible says Jesus Christ, even though he was God, taught it not robbly to be equal with God, but intentionally took upon himself a form of a servant. And the Bible says being found in a form of a servant, he humbled himself. And the Bible says, therefore, God also highly exalted him. Don't exalt yourself. Be humble. And the Lord God Almighty will exalt all of us. Those who will learn to sow in tears will reap in joy. If you don't learn to sow in tears, when the harvest time comes, you may not even know how to use it because you will spend it because you will never suffer when you were sowing. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will help us. Today people come to Zoom Lion and the next day they want to ride in a big car. What a pressure you are putting on the company. Serve the nation. Let me also serve the nation. Let the chiefs serve the nation. Let the politicians serve their constituency. And the services is the sowing. And the Lord God Almighty will reign upon Ghana. And the seed that we have sown will germinate. We are talking about the future Ghana. We are not talking about the now. I know that at least one person we hear this voice of God that is tendering in my spirit. And when you do, and you 
take what I've said through the power of the Holy Ghost and you decide that I'm not going to be like them. I want to be an ordinary politician. I've come to serve the people. Let my family members tell me that, excuse my language, you are a stupid man. When you had this opportunity, you should have sent this your nephew to America. You should have sent this one to UK. You should have sent this one to Germany. Let them insult you. Tell them, I came to sow against the future. If you don't sow against the future, and you think that it is all about you and your children and your children's children, then you'll be denying us of a better Ghana. I will be denying the Church of Pentecost of a better future if I want to be Lord over the church. I pray that God will grant us grace, the spirit of humility, the patience to serve and to wait for our time. So when it's after school, you are sitting in a posh car, ask yourself the means by which you got it. Ask yourself. Everybody wants to be a minister. Becoming a pastor in Ghana is so cheap because you don't, you don't need anything. You don't need any qualification. You only need a piece of land, just a small briefcase, and then that is it. You can decide to take any title that you want. You can take apostle, you can add prophet to it, you can add bishop to it. So one person is apostle, prophet, bishop. The next day, he's in a big car. We are disturbing the nation. We are destroying the very future of the church. We are destroying the very future of our nation. Can I call all of us to humility? That today, let us lift up our hands and bless the name of the Lord. I want you to sacrifice against the future. If you want to eat, then you'll be denying the future for all of us, our children and our children's children. May the Lord bless us. I hope I've spoken to somebody's heart. And let it be that God will be the God of our nation. God bless you.